Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and I'm going to be taking you through my second part of this short video series on network flow, looking at maximum flow and minimum cut theorem. Now, I'm assuming you've watched the previous video all about network flow, looking at new concepts like sources and sinks and capacities of networks. So if you haven't watched that video, I would recommend going and watching that one first. This is for Year 12 General Maths in Queensland and it's part of Unit 4. And please like and subscribe to the channels and tell your friends all about it. Now, we're going to be talking about cutting a network in this particular video. There might be lots of different reasons why you may wish to cut the flow within a network. And this diagram I've got here with the burst water main is a classic example. At somewhere in that network, they're going to need to cut the power off for the water so that the water stops spraying all over the suburb. There might be other examples. You might need to shut down an electricity grid to be able to do some maintenance on that electricity grid or even to cut off roads so that um, road cars can't pass through while you're doing major road works or clearing up from an accident. So let's look at what we mean by cutting in a network. So this is where we're going to be completely separating our source and sink from one another. And this is what we call a valid cut. So if there is a cut through the network, we need to make sure that there can be no more flow out of the source into the sink. Now, this only is going to be a theorem that will apply to weighted directed graphs. You'll notice this graph hasn't been weighted yet, but it is directed. It's got arrows pointing from one direction to the other. And this really only works when we're looking at flows that are coming out from a source and that source only. And this is an example of one where we've got flow coming back into the source. So our minimum cut theorem that we're going to talk about later doesn't apply in these situations. And you probably won't find any examples in your textbooks of networks like this where we've got flows coming in and out of the source. It also only applies to flows that are coming all into the sink at the end and where there's no outflow from the sink afterwards. So there's our sink there at vertex I. And this would be an example where we've got flow coming back out of the sink into another direction. So this would not apply here as well. Now, I do appreciate that there are situations in real life where you've got flows in and out of a source or a sink, but this is a more of a theoretical um, process. So we're just going to focus on these more simpler examples where we've only got flow coming out of the source and flow into the sink. Now, I'm going to be representing my different cuts through the network using straight orange lines and later on some squiggly lines. Now, you don't have to do it in orange. You don't have to do it in a separate colour at all. It's a good idea to label your cuts with different names. And we can take these at various places through our network. And this is just an example of a few. They don't have to be vertical lines. And your networks won't always go from left to right. You can have ones that go from the top to the bottom. So it's just important to be flexible. And you may need to draw squiggly lines to get your network to cut in different ways. And you're going to see some examples of that later on. All of the cuts I've just shown you were valid because we completely cut that source off from the sink. So that's a very important thing to remember. We've also got some new terminology, insides of the cut. The inside of the cut is the side that includes our source. So here's our source at A, and that side of the orange line, the left-hand side of that is called the inside of the cut. The outside of the cut is the opposite side, the side that includes the sink. So our sink is at vertex I, and that's the right-hand side of this cut. But like I said, it's not always going to be a left-to-right network. So you may need to be aware. It could be top and bottom, for example. But you just need to look at which side is the sink on. That's the inside of your cut. Now, one of the simple questions, simple familiar questions you might get asked is to identify which cuts are valid and which cuts are not. So we've got three cuts on this particular diagram here. Cut one is valid because we've completely cut our source and sink off from one another. Cut two is not, it doesn't cut right through the network and we can still have some flow along our top edges. But cut three is also valid. So as you notice here, we've got a diagonal cut. Diagonal is fine, okay? All right, we're gonna introduce you now to something called the capacity of a cut. And this is the sum of all the flows that pass across the cut. Now, it's very important that we only count the flows that are coming from the inside to the outside. So if you've got flows coming in an opposite direction from the sink direction back to the source, we don't count those flows when we're counting capacity. Now, and this is a fairly simple example that we can see on this particular page. We've all got our flow all in the one direction, so that's not going to cause any issues for us. But we're now asked to calculate capacity of just the two cuts shown. So the way we do that is we add up all of the edges that pass through the cut flowing towards the sink. So 300 plus 800 plus 150 gives me 1250. And typically I would use units of measurement if they're given to me. 
cut two, pass through three edges. Now you'll notice that the 800 is all the way over on the left, so it's very easy to miss that. So be very careful that you make sure that any edges it passes through that you count those edges. And that can get a little bit tricky once you start to get multiple cuts through a network to make sure you've got every edge counted. Okay, we're now going to talk about something called the minimum cut. So we've looked at multiple ways that we can cut our networks. And the one with the lowest capacity when we add those, those edges up is called our minimum cut. Now we've also got a term called the maximum flow of a cut network. And that is going to be equal to the capacity of the minimum cut. Now you won't find this on your QCAA formula sheet. You just need to remember this. So if you're asked to find the maximum flow of a network like this, you're going to be looking for that minimum cut and that will equal your maximum flow. So to find that minimum cut, our steps are going to be as follows. Firstly, we're going to find all the valid cuts. Now, I've only shown two on this diagram, but there's a lot more. Then we're going to calculate the capacity of each of the cuts, and then thirdly, find the minimum cut, which then gives us the maximum flow. And in this example, we've only got the two cuts, so the one that has the maximum flow and the minimum cut would be cut two. Let's have a quick look at this example, worked example three, calculating the maximum flow of this network shown below. It's the David Dam system. You'll notice that the flow backwards from C to B, if we were to make a cut through that edge, we would not be including that edge because it's flowing back towards the source. So firstly, we're gonna identify all our valid cuts that we can find through the network. I found a few. You might be able to find more. Maybe I've missed one or two. And maybe if you draw a squiggly line, you might be able to find more cuts. We've got five here to look at. So firstly, we've identified those cuts. Secondly, we're going to calculate the capacity of the cuts. So I've added these up together. You may want to pause and just have a look at where I've calculated these. Be very careful with cut number two and cut number three, because both of those pass through that edge, CB, that's flowing backwards towards the source. So we don't include the 400 in either of those calculations, um, because we only calculate the capacity going from the inside of the cut to the outside in that direction. So then we find the minimum cut and we would find that would be cut number four because that's got the smallest and of course we're going to present our answer in megalitres per second as per given in the question. So we've written a statement to finish that off. Let's look again at a slightly more complicated example, example four of a rail network that needs to be cut and we need to find the maximum flow. So firstly, let's identify all of those valid cuts, and there's going to be lots of these. So they're going all different directions. Notice I've started to draw some squiggly lines to show some of the ones that can't be drawn without doing a straight line, because sometimes you won't be able to use a ruler. So be prepared for a little bit of mess. Okay, we've got eight cuts to analyse. You may find more. Good luck. All right, so now we're going to calculate the capacity of all those cuts. Now, this is a fairly easy one because all of those flows go from the left to the right, from source to sink. So we don't have to exclude any of these as we're going along. But we've now identified eight different cuts and their values. Now, I've gone through this fairly quickly to save time, but you may want to have a little pause there and go back and look at each one of those cuts and how I've added those edges together. So now we identify that minimum cut. Thankfully, it was the first one we found, but it's always not always going to be that way. If you remember in our previous one, it was part way down the list. So don't always assume that your first cut's going to be the minimum cut. And that's the cut that we found, 140 trains per hour, giving my final answer as a statement. Well, that's all we have time for today. I'm so glad you joined me. Please join me for my next video when we're going to talk about the Hungarian algorithm and bipartite graphs, and that will wind up a whole unit on networks. Have a lovely day.